Hello and welcome to Live Conversation on Alatra TV. My name is Olga. My co-host today is also Olga. And we have the pleasure of speaking with two wonderful guests today. We had them on the program before, and both of them have already shared their vision of the Creative Society, which is a pro project on the platform of Alatra International Public Movement. And... Um, to remind our viewers, uh, I would like to first introduce our guests and then uh, share a little story on how we all got connected and met. So our first guest today is Mr. Alexander Evergreen. And our second guest is Mr. K.K. Diaz. And um, on our program, on the prior live conversations with Dr. Evergreen, we actually asked them, who is that one person that he would like to meet? And we ask our viewers to share this video, and we're using the rule of six handshakes to see how fast the video would get to the person that he picked. And he did pick uh, Mr. K.K. Diaz, and today we are uniting them together. And um, we also first would like to show quotes that you uh, have shared with us on prior live conversations uh, about Creative Society and how you envision it. So our viewers can see them right now. And uh, we also noticed that after the interview, we understood that you are both men of action. You follow your dreams and you use your mistakes as lessons for growth. And um, also from our prior life conversations, you understood, we understood that both of you understand the importance of working together and how one person can make a difference. So today, can you please share with us and with our viewers, uh, how did you overcome your fears? And um, how did you achieve your goal by using conscience and honesty as the best and the main qualities? With who you want to start? And uh, how about, well, Dr. Evergreen, how about with you? Fantastic. Well, First of all, it's, it's a great question because many people overlooking the things, why they do something, what they need, what they have done to get there, and uh, what they need to do to stay there and grow. So the first thing is to be you have to honest, you have to be honest to yourself and believe in yourself. This is the main point in doing whatever you do in life. It doesn't matter if you become a doctor, if you become a fireman, a public speaker, an entrepreneur, whatever it is, you have to believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself in whatever you do. Why should other people believe in you? This is a quote that I use a lot. If you believe in yourself, other people see it, they feel it, they feel that, that, that energy, that, that, that thrive in you. And many people, they, they go on stage or they speak in front of an audience or they speak to a potential client and they're so uncertain about themselves that people, they pick it up. They listen to you, they laugh at you, they say, thank you very much, but let me think about it. And they cannot overcome that point of thinking about whatever. And that is because they don't believe in themselves. But if you believe in what you sell, what you do, what you bring, and you bring it honest, so you tell the truth, and that means believing in your product, believing in yourself, and they will believe in what you bring to them. And that means you close bigger deals, you're more happy, you're more successful in the company, people want to learn from you. So it becomes a visual circle. And this is something that I learned from the beginning when I was introduced to Brian Tracy many, many years back, that's now 30 years ago. And he told me also, listen, you should write a book or become a comedian because you're so easy in talking and everything what you do is with a smile on your face. Because, and I told him, I said, because I enjoy what I'm doing. And he said, if you learn every day from every person you meet, young, old, fat, thin, whatever, you know, the whole spectrum, you learn every day from every, any person, you become very successful. And this is what I did. I learn, I listen because you got two ears and one mouth. So although I speak a lot, you have to listen to what people say, what they want, what they mean, why they say certain things. And if you understand the five W's, what we discussed last time, then yeah, the sky is the limit. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing your uh, vision. What about you, KK? So, you know, I, I always like to <clears throat> create context for, for the, the discussions and um, what I want to do is just to make sure that we're on the same page, which I'm, which I'm, I'm very confident we, that we are. Um, in, in as far as fear, you, 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 you know, you asked, how do we, how do we deal with fear? How do we overcome fear? And I believe that 
one can never truly be fearless, but one can have courage. Um, and, and that's what one should work on, right? Which is have the ability to do the things that you need to do, um, even though you're feeling the fear, right? That, that's courage. And, and, and I, I personally remember uh, Nelson Mandela having been quoted on, on saying something along those lines. And it's just something that I've kind of ran with for as long as I remember. And also, you can still have courage, but still have fear to some extent, because certain things are much more fearful than others, right? Or are much more scary than others. Um, for example, standing in front of people, I know, I know people like myself and, and Alex, and, and I, I'm going to assume the same with you, because it's literally what we are all doing now, is we've put ourselves in front of possibly hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, right? Some people fear that. And from what I understand is some people would rather, would rather see themselves being swallowed underground than standing in front of other people, okay? So some people would rather lose their life to some extent rather than stand in front of people. And that's literally a matter of courage. But I think the idea of purpose, meaning why you do something, right? Um, the reasons why you need to do something, that can truly propel your, your, the degree of courage that you can have. Meaning if uh, one of, one of, the, one of the, the tricks that I tend to use when I talk to people about, um, about goal setting, for example, is, you know, we, we have one of the most dangerous um, uh, societies on, on the continent, as a matter of fact, here in South Africa. And it's not easy for the average individual to have the courage to walk through uh, a dangerous township in the middle of the night, okay? And so I would typically ask the question is, you know, would you walk uh, in the middle of a township, this particular township in the middle of the night to cross over walking, right? And everybody obviously thinks I'm crazy to ask them that. Um, and then, you know, just about everybody says no. And then I ask them, but what if the purpose is to actually save your child? If your child is on the other end of the township and the only way for you to save them is for you to walk through that township, would you do it? Guess what? Everybody now gains the courage and enable that will enable them to actually do something that would that they would under normal circumstances be afraid of. So those two things are important to understand. We do feel fear, but we need to gain courage in order to do the things that we need to do, um, or rather to overcome the fear that we feel. But purpose, meaning the reasons why we would do those things, are very important in helping to um, help us, uh, I guess, achieve or gain a sense of courage um, that's, as far as that's concerned. So you also mentioned conscience uh, or conscious, being conscious. When you are not present, you are sometimes not aware of the extent of courage that you need to have, if that makes sense. You will typically not be aware of the extent at which um, the reasons you need to do something, how important they are in the greater scheme of things. When you are not conscious, you typically tend to be selfish and you tend to think of just yourself, right? You're not thinking about how your actions could potentially affect, you know, the ecosystem or other people, so to speak. Um, but I think it's, it's important to be conscious and how I help myself to be conscious is by reading, right? And, 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 and listening to people like Alex um, who, who teach people to become, you know, the best versions of ourselves, and also something that's helped me a lot in the last 12 years has been studying philosophy. Philosophy has helped me ground myself a lot more um, than I have been able to do in, in the past. Um, it helped me get in touch with, I guess, what's happening around and it helped me to get uh, to reduce the degree to which I'm selfish. And I have people like Trevor Walla in my life who are my personal coaches and my mentors who help me with that. Thank you. Well, this is so great. Yes, the vision and the, and the goal is so important to kind of let go of that fear and a step over, I guess, yourself or oneself to move forward. And the same with um, the Project Creative Society. We know that we are talking about building a society where everybody's happy. We are talking about a society where everybody enjoys their daily life and have enough of, you know, food on the table and enough money to support themselves and their families. So how do you envision a role of a man in a creative society? KK, if you can continue, please. You know, to be honest with you, that's an extremely difficult question to answer. Okay. 
because even in the same society, we all have such different perspectives of what a man's role is, what a woman's role is, and what each of them should be able to do um, to transcend their, their nature, right? And I have to be honest and say that is one of the areas that I'm possibly still struggling with um, for myself, but I'm enjoying the journey of discovering. And, and one of the things that I've truly discovered, and, and, and therefore part of what man needs to understand um, and, and, and improve, rather improve his understanding of, of, of himself so that he can be a better player in society. One of them is vulnerability, you know. And, and going back to what I said earlier, pers perspective and, and definitions and context, we have, I think, incorrectly made things that are actually strong, we've made it to look weak, i.e. being vulnerable, okay? So as a man, when you allow yourself to be vulnerable, that's actually a strength. It's not a weakness, right? Being able to say to, to, to other people or to be honest and be open and say, you know what, especially right now during COVID-19, where a lot of people are losing jobs, i.e. they're not going to be able to fulfill that typical uh, man in the home or head of the ho household role uh, without having, being able to put food on the table, is a lot of them are scared. A lot of them are fearful. Um, a lot of them are angry, um, and a lot of them don't know, right? So the level of confidence um, that and the strength that typically um, characterizes a man, a lot of a lot of men are actually not going to be with with that privilege. And I don't think I don't think we should take away the idea of a man being the protector of the home. I don't think we should take away the idea or, or the role of a man being one of, of a provider. I don't think we should take that away because I know men are struggling with the sense of dignity when you do that, okay? So COVID-19 or the situation that we're in today um, has not only gotten worse, right? For example, we've got one of the highest unemployment rates in the country. Um, and from what I understand, we are reaching uh, somewhere between 40 and 50%. And that's, that's going to be massive. That means a lot of men who are typically um, breadwinners are not going to have the ability to provide for their families, right? That's going to make them feel vulnerable, feel weak, um, and feel that maybe they don't have a role in society to play or in their family to start off with. And, and I've, I'd like to come back to, to, to this point at, at, at some point in the conversation. But I think one of the things that we've been questioned as men is why can't we help out more in the family, i.e., why don't we look after the kids? And what we tend to say is, but we, 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 we don't naturally know how to nurture, okay? And I, I don't know the extent of the truth in that. But I think one of the things that need to be respected in society and in the household is everybody needs to play to their greatest strength. And men typically have maybe a generic sense of strength. Um, and we need to be allowed to play that role because it makes us feel good. It makes us feel, it makes us to gain that sense of dignity and, and, and to, to feel like we can then do the other things like look after our, our family um, a, lot, a lot better. I hope that answers the question. Yes, most definitely. Thank you so much. And, and Alexander, would you like to share your vision of a man in a creative society, a role of a man in a creative society? Yeah, exactly what KK said. No, no, no. <laughs> so I agree in, 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 in great lines what, uh, what KK is saying. And again, uh, something like this is very complex. This is something you have to start with. Because again, men and women are so different. But in this day and age, and I'm 100% in favor of that, I prefer equality. You know, for me, men and women are, are the same. They can both run a company. They can both uh, raise children. They can both drive a car. They can fly a plane. They can do whatever they want. But there are differences, and we have to keep that in mind. So as a success coach, I'm on stage a lot. I speak to many people. So you're not the first one who asked me that question. So on stage, I have to come up with something like, okay, how can I make people understand, make them feel comfortable, and give them the solution and the answer at the same time? So I 
picked out a few people in states, a few men, a few women, and said, listen, I got this issue. Who can help me by solving it? And I gave them a few minutes. After a few minutes, the ladies pick up the hand. Well, I have an idea. The men pick up the hand. Said, okay, one by one. So the men came with an answer, said, listen, boom, this is what I will do. One answer. And it was a good answer. It, could, it was an answer that you indeed could implement in whatever situation I brought forward. And all the people, okay, and now I asked that, that same question to that lady. And she came with an answer, I mean, fantastic, but she could almost write a book. What I would do is I would sit down with the men, I would sit down with the women, I would give some attention to the children, then I would ask about their family, their situation, how's the dog, uh, how's the car running, and you know, way more in-depth, detailed, and whatever, and that's typical of women. They take way more time and way more emotion in what they're doing, and the men will straightforward, boom. And then I try to explain to the people, like, do you see, both is right, but both is so different. And all of a sudden I start looking at each other, so what he does is right, what she does is right, but she does it differently because she has genetically way more like the caring and taking time because they they give birth to a child, so they already have in their genes to take way different care than what men do. And it's the same thing in society. So of course both you can fly a plane, but women approach it maybe a little bit different when they do a landing, then the guy follow protocol, boom, this is how you do it, one, two, three. And if there's a situation, of course, they both act professionally. So this is something that makes people understand straight away that we all equals, and I'm very for equality, but we are so different. And we can never ever be exactly the same. We can do the same things, and we can we can follow our dreams, whatever we want to do, and I think we should support each other. But also, again, what KK already brought with the COVID problem, many people losing their jobs. So many men are at home, they're feeling helpless. So what you also hear is domestic violence. Domestic violence, really, really bad. But it's inevitable. It happens. It happens more than before the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So what I can say to people when people ask me, like, how do I handle that? That's communication. The moment you start communicating with, with the man, let's say, who lost his job, firstly, take away the guilt. It's not his fault. This is so important. And even as a man to a man, you know, I talk to my friends and say, listen, you're a great guy. You've got a great profession. You're very professional in what you're doing. And just... Money-wise, you know, the, the company lost so much money, that's why they had to let a few people go, and you were just unfortunate enough to lose your job. But also that women talk to the guy, like, listen, you're still the man of the house, you're still a great guy, but no problem, I still have my job, so we can still provide for the kids, for the money, so you just do your things a little bit, help me out a little bit in the, in the household so I can spend some more time with work that we can compensate a little bit, but listen, you're still a great guy. If you show respect, and that the men say, you know what, I'm not, indeed, I'm not the provider right now, but after the, the pandemic is over, I'm going to get a job again, and we're getting into the world again, that we're both having a job, we both take care of the children, feeling equal. Because many men are open for that, they are open for being equal in what they're doing, they don't have to be here, and of course, I, I understand what KK is saying, and I agree in, in a sense, that the men always have to feel like, okay, I take care of my family. That's a certain pride, what you get from when you're young, you see your father do that, and you want to do that also, but in the meantime, by doing that, you also are very happy when your wife says, hey, I just got a promotion and I made a few hundred dollars more and wow, I'm really proud of you. But you're still saying, like, but I'm the man of the house. So in a positive sense, yes, communication, that's everything. So that also uh, minimizes or uh, lower the domestic violence, what you have right now. So I think these, these two packages bringing, bringing the answer to the front. Mm. And yes, I have to agree. And uh, we were just talking actually yesterday about domestic violence and uh, how creative society is a world without uh, violence. And uh, both of you brought up good points. And even from our prior conversations, uh, both of you also said how together each person can do a lot. And it all starts with one person, even though you think, well, who am I? I'm just one person. I can't do anything. But as Alexander mentioned last time, it's like an ocean, right? And each person is a drop. And if we put how, how many drops will it take to fill up this big swimming pool, right? So together we can do so much more. And uh, a role of a man and a woman in a society is important today. We're talking about men in particular, and they each have, it's important to be, like you said, have communication. Communication is very important to have that inner growth and inner self-development, right? Because that's also important to know who you are, to understand um, and to be the person you want to be in this world. And that is very well, true. I think, I think a very important thing is, and sorry that I interrupt you, it is leading by example. 
what I mentioned last time, indeed, the ocean is filled with all drops. So you start with one and in the end, the ocean is there. You've got trillions of liters of water. But if you're leading by example, people will follow. Because the biggest mistake is that you point downwards, that you say uh, the lowest in the company. And I don't mean degrading the lowest, but I mean in a lower position. You have to do this, but do you do the right thing as a leader in the company? So if you lead by example, people will follow. And it's the same thing in, in a household. And it's the same thing in, in society. If you lead by example, you do the good thing, one person at a time, people will follow and then you can create a group around you. Yes, definitely. Lead by example is probably one of the only things we can do, right? And that's how, like you said, you know that somebody's confident, you know that somebody's telling the truth when they lead by example, when they uh, actually share their own personal experience. And that is very important in all spheres. And also the next question is, how important is it uh, to unite and collaborate all together in order to build a future that humanity deserves? Uh, Alexander? Well, I think it's, it's one of the most important thing. Uh, the world is getting smaller and smaller. Uh, everything is getting more easy. The internet, I mean, you can access instantly what happens in the other side of the world. Planes are easy. The plane tickets getting crazy cheap. Sometimes you fly around the world for a few hundred dollars. And that also means that people with knowledge uh, at a certain point, let's say being in South Africa, and me with a certain knowledge here in Cambodia, we are 10,000 kilometers away, but it, it takes us a few hours to get so close. Firstly, it's easy to using medias like this, but if we unite the whole world and we bring all the, the, the continents together, it is so important because I have something in Cambodia that you don't have in Africa, and in Africa they have something they don't have in Europe, and in Europe, they got something they don't have in South America. And if you then see that you have all those combined forces, and it's just it's one click away to bring those together. And it all starts with an idea. If you share, if you care, and if you then see the benefits, you put it on paper or you put it in, in a spreadsheet. You say, listen, this is what you can bring. This is what you can bring. This is what you can bring. And then you come from five different nations. It doesn't matter. And it's so important that you're willing to share because sharing, firstly, is caring. But it's also bringing solutions to the table. That's so important. I think I cannot bring it. I can talk it over in 20 different ways, but constantly I will say the same thing. Sharing it and communicating. Communicating, bring it to the table. And every country, including South Africa, I know South Africa, unemployment is very, very high at the moment. But I see great potential because they're great people. They have a lot to offer. And it's just a situation where they're in right now. So I see this as a challenge. As an opportunity, and then coming back to what Keke just mentioned, I'm not going to go into a chunky town with very angry people without a reason. But if I go there and being fearful, but in a positive way, because I'm like, listen, guys, the reason I'm here is to help you, and this is what I bring to you, and this is what it will do for you, and that already gives me the energy and the the, uh, the overcome of fear that I say I come here for a reason, I come here to help, and that's the same thing in bringing positive solutions to the world. It's always what you bring to the table. And that overcomes fear. Of course, when I'm standing in front of 10,000 people, I am scared, but the scared is a positive fear. It's not a scared fearing, like I'm standing there with a the microphone and freeze. I'm standing with that microphone and I'm like, wow, a lot of people. <laughs> but I'm going to bring them something. When I'm finished, wow, I'm first. My fear is gone and these people are happy, the majority of them. And it's the same thing, what, I, what you just asked in the test. Thank you so much. And KK, if you can share, uh, uh, I guess, with us the vision of how important it is to collaborate together and work together for the better future for all of us. 100%. So, you know, it's, 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 it's very clear that we, we all have uh, certain strengths or different strengths and, and obviously weaknesses. And one of, the, one of the things that, one of the ways rather to see the importance of collaborating is, is what we touched on earlier, which is a family, right? Uh, where a man, uh, he may be strong in other areas, uh, but he's weak in other areas, right? And the same applies with, with, with the woman um, in the family. She's got uh, strength in certain areas, but not so much in other areas. And if those two communicate and they work together, they have a similar goal that they are very conscious on in terms of what they'd like to achieve, you know, together they can go very far. You know, you can always see this in, in couples that are together and, and, and they just love each other and they're working together to achieve a common goal. You know, it's, it's all beautiful and it's, you, you can see it's sustainable and there's longevity in what they're doing. Um, so the idea of collaborating is important in terms of longevity and sustainability and fairness and making sure everybody gets what they need to get based on what they are unable to get by themselves because the other person can then help. 
And the same thing applies in companies, right? You have people who are great in marketing. You have people who are great in sales. You have people who are good with people. Some people are great with machines. Some people are good with leadership and, and so forth. Uh, some people are good with money, man managing and handling money uh, better than others. So that really, uh, I think, articulates or exemplifies what uh, the importance of collaboration is. And one of the last things I said during our last our, our previous interview was uh, the African proverb that says, uh, you know, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, right, you have to go with others. And going with others means collaborating because uh, we all know life, life is, not, is not a single destination, right? It's a journey. It's a, it's a continuous journey. And if you really want to go far and you want to live long, be with others. And, and just lastly, I think the idea of, of, of us as, uh, as human and, and, and as, um, as people, the idea of us needing to congregate and socialize and, and, be physic and be in a physical space with each other speaks to the idea of collaboration, right? It speaks to us wanting to, to, to connect and, and to build together. Um, being part of a community is also one of the, one of the big um, six, uh, six needs that a human being has. And part of that community is so that we can build together. You know, on your own, there's only so much you can do. But with others, you can, only, you can achieve much, much greater things. You can fill that swimming pool. You can fill uh, that ocean we were talking about instead of just being those few drops by yourself. And it is, yes, I have to agree that it is so important to work together. I mean, the possibilities are endless. Our, you know, we have beautiful scientists, we have beautiful people that um, in different trades. And if we unite them all together, our world can be peaceful, our world can be so much better. And we can create that world that we're all dreaming of, and mm -hmm. live in it together, where we're all comfortable, where we all uh, have all our needs fulfilled, such as, I mean, we're talking from basic needs, right? In some countries, such as food, medical care, education, all those things can not only be fulfilled, but they can be high quality. And, uh, but we can only achieve this all together with all the countries on board. And uh, that is so important to collaborate and to unite because otherwise, by yourself, yes, you can do a lot, but like both of you said, together, we can do so much more and it is so important. Yes, I agree that together we can be the force that can drive the change and we can drive that change very quickly once we start talking about it. Because if we don't talk about it, it's like it doesn't exist, right? We just live in our lives, everyday lives. But when we envision this creative society, then we can actually put some action steps in place. And the next question is, uh, what action steps can we take to unite all active citizens of the world? And Alexander, could you share with us? Can you repeat the question one more time? Because sure. I didn't hear it. What <laughs> steps can we take in order to start uniting all of the active citizens of the world? Okay. Firstly, again, an amazing question because these questions are, are so important that we bring them in, in, in right content. And what Keke also said, things sometimes sound easy, but they are not. And this is actually very simple to answer when people are willing to listen. Change while moving forward. A professor told me this many, many years back. He said, everything in life is change. Because what is normal today, tomorrow is already outdated. If you see that what happened from 1900 up till 2000, I sat down with the professor. He said, listen, in the last 100 years, we did the same thing what happened in the last 10,000 years. And I was thinking about it. It's true. He said, and change is everything in there. Everything goes so fast. The moment you stop moving forward, the, the moment you start learning, the moment you start creating new opportunities, seeing opportunities, and stop moving forward, the moment you stand still, you start moving backwards. And that means in business, in life, in opportunities, in happiness, in everything. So this is the most important, just a few words in, in a sentence. Change while moving forward. And that's everything. You have to keep changing, and you have to keep moving forward. And believing in yourself and sharing it with others, because you have to do it together. You know, 100 years ago, you, you read the newspaper and what was read, written there, you believe. Nowadays, you say something and within five minutes, people can go to five different media to check if what you said is correct. And you know now that almost the whole world have access to that, that, that mega uh, mountain of, of, of data. And by keeping that in mind, that means you are being helped by creating opportunities, by creating change, positive change. 
and by doing that and helping others, I mean, yeah, the sky is the limit. So change while moving forward. This is my answer. So what are some of the creative ways, I guess, we can unite people that are people of action, people that are already doing something good for their communities, for their neighborhoods? How can we unite everybody like that globally so we can see that impact faster? Question to me again, say you're extending the question to me. OK, well, for instance, if you see uh, I am part of GGA. And Global Goodwill Ambassadors is amazing. Many things uh, are being done. We help people who are less fortunate than, uh, than ourselves. And you see some people are very, very active. And some other people are followers. People follow and, and, and see what other people are doing. And they say, thumbs up, very good. What should be done is we should communicate more with people. We should have more meetings like what we're having right now. And tell them, what have we done? What did it take? And what was the outcome? What was the benefit of doing this? And imagine that you and you and you are doing the exact same what I did and better. And I can help you, show you how you do it, and if you then give it your own twist, it's even better than when I do it. By doing that, you can actually spread within no time. You multiply it tenfold, twentyfold, a hundredfold. And this is just by helping people. So this is not only by helping people in humanitarian work, but it's in business, it's in communicating with your family, with your friends. So by sharing in medias, by sitting down, by communicating, and by sharing the, the, the outcome stories, so the positive stories, not all the struggles, because the struggles will come bit by bit. They just say like, oh, you know, it took me a lot of money, a lot of time, and they didn't listen. No, no need. People don't want to hear that. People want to hear like, listen, I went there, we communicated. It took some time, but in the end, this is what happened. And I can show you some pictures, and I can show you some videos. It was amazing. Those smiles on those children's faces. Wow. And people want to have that feeling as well. They say, oh, can I do that? And it's only costing me that much time or that much effort. So sharing is caring. The more you share what you're doing, the goodwill things you're doing, in whatever line of work or, or personal life it is, it will change everything. And that changed the whole world by not throwing dirt outside. You know, when you're in the car, eat something, open the window, throwing outside. I see that so often. I will stop, step out of the car and knock on the window and ask them, like, listen, why you just throw it at home? Make a difference because if you throw it at home and all the cars today do the same thing, I mean, five garbage bags less, and we do that for a month, you're talking about 150 garbage bags less just on the street. And if you all do it, I mean, you're talking about millions of kilos less. It's all starting with how you think and how you react to certain things. And if you do it with a smile, people pick it up. If you do it with an angry face, people give you big anger. It's all the approach. Okay. Yes, awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, KK, can you also answer this question? What steps can we all take to unite active citizens of this world towards a creative and constructive society? That's a, it's a loaded question <laughs> because there are so many different there's so many different ways to answer that question. Um, so I think I think at the end of the day or at the beginning of the day, it starts with vision, right? And what you ladies are doing, uh, you, you are really an, a, a perfect example of how to go about making a change, right? Number one, somebody had a vision and that person started speaking to another person. So firstly, take the vision from wherever it comes from, put it down on paper or type it on your phone or computer, whatever the case may be, but write it down and start communi communicating it, right? Have the courage to tell people about your vision. Um, those are the steps you can follow. And I believe that when you share it with other people, it starts to actually clarify even more so in your own mind, right? And what you don't want to do, and this is very important, um, going back to what Alex said about change. You know, one of the, one of the, one of the biggest reasons why change doesn't happen when it's because uh, the way it's supposed to happen is because people want to hold on too much onto what they think needs to happen and they don't involve other people. So the idea of sharing your vision with other people is very important and for you together as a collective to build on that vision. So what we need to do as the first thing, as the first step, is to define what that vision is for all of us, right? What that creative society looks like and we all build the vision together. All right, because there's a vision, meaning the thing that we want to achieve. But then over and above that, we need to define what the purpose is. 
What is the reason? Why do we want to achieve that vision? Okay. And in the middle of all of that, we need to realize that in order for us to achieve things we have not achieved before, we have to train, we have to educate ourselves, we have to develop ourselves, right? And self-leadership is very important in as far as that's concerned. So all of us need to start developing ourselves and things like courage speak to that self-leadership because how are you going to lead yourself through uh, and over uh, obstacles that you fear, right? So developing your skills, developing yourself uh, from that perspective is very important. And just because something looks grander and it's big um, and it feels nice it, for you, it doesn't mean it feels nice for the other person, right? We, we as salespeople, and I, you know, Alex and I say train salespeople um, amongst what we do, which, which is something that, that I love discovering about, about what, what we have in common. And one of the things that we always teach people, I know I teach people and I know um, uh, because, because I've learned also from Brian Tracy, I'm sure Alex is it's something Alex also does which is always sell people on the value proposition. Always tell people what's in it for them, okay? That is very important because naturally as human beings, we always want to know what's in it for us because we are always trying to preserve our energy. We're always trying to preserve the resources we have. Now, in order to unlock other people's resources and commitment, you need to actually sell them the idea, sell them the vision and the dream for them in terms of how they stand to benefit as well. So that's very important. Um, and we need to, we need to um, have high levels of commitment. That's very important, right? We need to be sure that the people we're working with are highly committed and that we ourselves are committed and, then we get a, and that we're going to go through the difficulty um, that we all need to face in order to achieve the greatest things that we've never, we've never achieved before. I think in a nutshell for me, that's that I think that's where we would need to start and some of those things uh, we need to uphold for as long as uh, we have to towards achieving um, a creative society that we all know will benefit all, all of us. Very Thank nice you very question, much. KK. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you I, very I much. I want to add one word to that. I want to add yes, one absolutely. word to that. What, mm -hmm. what KK said is correct. And again, I worked personally with Brian Tracy uh, before and, and for many years. And he taught me one thing. He was on stage one time. I was, I was packed. And the only thing he said, he stand there, he said, added value. And he walked away. And everybody was like, what? And then he came back and said, that's all I want to, want to say. Because that's what it's all about. And it, especially what, what Kay cannot say, because that straight away refreshed what, uh, what Brian Tracy said. There must be something in for someone else. So if you sell something, that means you first sell yourself. If you speak about something, you sell yourself. People say like, why is he there? What does it add for me? If I sell you a car, what is the added value? Instead of being a BMW, you buy a Mercedes or an Audi or whatever, there must be added value. If you're in a relationship, there must be an added value. With everything you do in life, it must be added value. And that's selling. You sell yourself. And the biggest mistake that people do is when they talk about their product, they start selling. And that's what you should not do. You should start listening. Because you can hear when people speak to you what their added value is, what they want. And then you can sell it back to them by adding that value for them. And that's, you use the different words. And then you say like, how is it possible you know me so well because I'm looking for this, 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 this. And you exactly mentioned it. But actually, they already say it to you. They say it in a different way. And that's listening. You add value by listening to your prospect or to any person. Yes, thank you. And today we noticed, we talked to so many people from around the world and all of them say how important it is, how they want to live in this creative society, how they envision it and how... We should be living in it already, that that should be our future, that it is a human right for everyone to have, you know, met, uh, high quality health care, education, food. I mean, that's probably one of the basic needs that we should all have and we should all be allowed to have it. Right. Um, we should all live comfortably, have enough time for our families. And um, today it is one on the platform of Alatra International Public Movement. It is um, the project where we're asking people all over the world also to get their idea, to get their vision of how they see it. And for our viewers, I would like to remind them if they would like to learn more about the project, please visit alatraunites.com or send us an email. You should see it on the screen right now. And uh, we're so happy to have you both here with us today. And a little bit um, before um, we continue on, 
It is so wonderful. I wanted to ask, Alexander, have you met KK before or is this the first time you're meeting each other in person? We, we speak to each other before. Uh, we are now uh, planning to meet each other after the COVID-19 pandemic is over. So then uh, we are working on a project, but we, uh, we now uh, fine tuning that more and more, but definitely through the program, we uh, met more and we spoke more and that's fantastic. So uh, yeah, thank you very much for that as well. That's amazing. And we can see how collaboration is so important and how many other people there are out there, right, that we can talk to and collaborate all together and create something amazing that we are both going to enjoy um, the world that we're all going to enjoy living in. And uh, I know last time on our program, we asked both of you whom you would like to meet and, and talk to about Creative Society. And uh, today, actually, Olga and I were thinking about it last night, and today we thought we we're going to uh, pick a person that we would like to meet and talk to about Creative Society. And uh, it's also a man of action. Yesterday, I was doing some research, and um, when I typed in the man of action, he was actually number three on the list. And right now, <laughs> we would like to our IT team to show... <laughs> Jackie Chan. Wow. <laughs> so we will like, need, yeah, to, to request our audience and everybody who might know Jackie Chan to send this video along with two hashtags, hashtag Creative Society, hashtag a lot reunites, and see how fast we can get to Jackie Chan. And I know Olga did some research, and I know he is doing great things as well. Is that right? Yes, but he's, a fantastic, he, fantastic he's a, just a very nice person and a very nice um, man, and that's why we thought he's a man of action in both ways, right? <laughs> so we thought it was a very fitting for today's uh, live broadcast. Yes, yeah, so... Right. Uh, I, I'm in. I'm in. We're <laughs> there, I'm in. <laughs> There you go. Perfect. And um, today we found out how important it is to build our relationships, to lead by example, to work together, to collaborate together, to um, first work on ourselves, right? To make sure that we have that inner, um, inner support that we all need in order to uh, overcome any fear, to overcome any obstacles, and to have that one goal one goal of creating a better world for everyone, not just, of course, for ourselves as well, but for everyone else, for our family, for our kids. And uh, together, we can definitely do a lot. And uh, especially if we use honesty and courage, and if we use conscience, if we use uh, all those best qualities, then there's nothing can stop us. I think we're unstoppable, and together we can definitely do a lot. And thank you so much for being with us today. Please let me know if you would like to add anything. I think, uh, you know, first of all, thank you very much for the opportunity. I think, you know, when, when I saw the post, A Man of Action, I thought, I need to become that man. <laughs> I need to become a man of action. And so I'm, I'm very inspired. And it's definitely, um, you know, the, the next thing for me is let me see what more I can do. And um, I, I, I'm looking forward to, to how I can play my part in, in, in contributing to a creative society. Yeah, same thing with me. I also want to thank the both of you, Olga, uh, for the kind invitation and uh, the great time we have uh, talking to, uh, to you ladies. Uh, secondly, uh, KK and I are talking very closely now by doing a digital project. So maybe KK can say something more about it very shortly. Also to help people, uh, because now with the COVID-19 and being restricted to their offices or their homes. So, Keke, can you enlighten that a little bit that we talked about it already a few times? So, so one of the things, thanks, Alex. One of the things that we spoke about is how can we help? Again, how can we con continue to help? And one of, uh, I mean, we've seen how many brick and mortar businesses or traditional businesses have not been able to to, to make the jump and to adapt to, to this, um, you know, new, new environment that requires uh, a lot of people to be digitally savvy, be able to market their businesses, go to e-commerce and, and so forth. So Alex and I uh, briefly spoke about putting together a digital marketing online summit that we're going to host uh, in June or July. So uh, we only had a brief time to talk about it. So we're in the process of finalizing the dates. And uh, we'll, so we'll reach out to everyone and just, uh, let you guys know about what we're planning to do and hopefully soon enough after that when the 
COVID-19 uh, and then lockdown rest restrictions end, we will definitely do something in person. And uh, we were talking about um, uh, kings and queens of sales, which is something we'd love to do in person, you know, in, in helping people to overcome that fear of, se of selling and being able to, to, um, to build on their dreams. So thanks for, that. thanks for the opportunity. And I look forward to doing something in person with Alex. That's awesome. We're so glad, glad that the rule of six handshakes is really working. And it seems like we all are connected around the globe through five or less social connections and that we all can collaborate with each other. There is nothing that really separates us. Uh, there are so many ideas that we can share and put into place and make this world a better place. And when, even when you said, like, you know, we need to learn how to sell. And that is true. We need to learn how to sell our kids on doing their homework. We need to sell our husbands on, you know, cutting the grass. We need to sell our neighbors on be being friends with us. And we need to, you know, s s the selling is not just, you know, products and services. Selling is all around us. Even the idea of creative society, that's selling it as well. You know, being passionate and talking about it, that's, you know, giving someone else an opportunity to learn about it and to voice their own opinion so thank you so much again for joining us and we will be connected and we'll stay connected and if you guys know another man of action that you would like to bring on and we have another wonderful conversation just like that we would like to have them as our guests so thank